Welcome to the Land Cruiser Project. What we do on this channel is review listings for 80 series, 100 series, and 200 series Land Cruisers. And we do this in order to identify common issues that pop up on these vehicles. Also do it to make sure the sellers are disclosing everything in their listings. And then also we do it just because I'm a big Land Cruiser enthusiast. I'd assume you are too, since you're here. And yeah, we just it's fun to talk about them, fun to see some of the, uh, the modifications, some of the work that some of them need. And yeah, it's just kind of fun to talk about them. So let's go ahead and transition and look at the vehicle we're going to study this week, which is one that kind of caught my attention a little bit. Uh, the Amazon green on a 200 series is one of the more rare colors. It's a beautiful color, by the way. Uh, almost as good as maybe even a little bit better, depending on the light, uh, as Imperial Jade Mica, right? The the green from the, the 100 series era. It kind of reminded me of another project. And so I thought at first, maybe that was the same one. And I was like, oh yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bid on this. But yeah, it's a little bit different. So yeah, somebody I'm uh, familiar with took a 200 or 2016 plus body, put it on a you know, 2008, nine uh, frame with engine. And yeah, they did that. Um, yeah. And they ended up with not, this wasn't the reason they did it, but ended up uh, yeah not having a sunroof on a US, you know, US market uh, 200 series. So anyway, pretty cool. But yeah, obviously not the same vehicle, but yeah, this one's pretty interesting nonetheless. So yeah, let's go through it. So it's located in Vestavia, Alabama. Uh, it's got 163,000 miles, which yeah, it's good, good mileage for 2008. And let's see anything out of the ordinary. It's got Amazon green metallic paint. It's got sand beige leather upholstery. Looks like it's got some slea off-road rock sliders, ARB skid plates, rhino rack, roof rack that we saw. Uh, everything else seems about normal. Um, I'm sure we'll get into more details. But yeah, he reading here in the description, so the truck was acquired by the current owner in December of 2022, and subsequent work involved uh, powder coating the, the wheels, getting them to be that bronze color, uh, and doing kind of outfitting it. Additional equipment includes the sunroof, blah, blah, blah. And let's see. So it's offered at no reserve by the seller on behalf of the current owner with a recent service record, a clean Carfax report, and a clean Alabama title. So uh, kind of a short sell here, December of 2022 until now. Uh, it looks like in addition to the wheels, they put some new um, yeah, BF Goodrich KO3s on there. Uh, yeah, interesting that they're yeah, selling it so quickly. Uh, let's see. Paintless dent repair was performed and uh, Rhino Rack Refract was installed. We'll look for evidence of that paintless dent repair, see if they pulled off body panels to do it or if they just drilled holes in the door jams. Uh, broken headlight, washer cover, and scratches in the paint are noted on the right front corner of the vehicle, and paint blemishes and clear coat failure are noted on the roof and hood. Uh, let's see, it's got KM3 tires, uh, everything else is normal. So a suspension leveling kit was installed under current ownership. So yeah, they just kind of did normal, you know, kind of like outfitting here. Uh, let's see, anything else here in the description? WeatherTech mats accompany the truck. So that's a nice touch. And yeah, that's pretty much it. 3,000 miles have been added since December and blah 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 everything else is pretty normal uh looks like the cabin air filter and radiator were replaced under current ownership so they've done some work uh kind of interesting to go through all that work in you know such short time just to sell it the underside was reportedly soda blasted which i'd assume they're talking about like carbon dioxide so it looks pretty clean and undercoated in preparation for the cell uh, let's go ahead. Let's see. Uh, the Carfax report shows no accidents and other damage in list history in Massachusetts and Alabama. Okay. So interesting note on Massachusetts. There's currently a lien. So you're going to have to go through the, uh, yeah, the sellers, uh, you know, lender in order to get this deal done. So yeah, in 2008, it was sold, looks like into Massachusetts, no accident history. So it's in Massachusetts. Let's find out how long it's been there. So 30 something thousand miles in two years, uh, 50,000 miles in yeah, four or five years. Let's see, when did it go to Alabama? So we've got a hundred and something thousand miles, almost 10 years now. Oh, 10 years in Massachusetts, more than that. So basically all of it until, until December of 2022 when the seller picked it up. So 160,000 miles in 14 years in Massachusetts. On that fact alone, yeah, that's uh, yeah, it's too much time in, in Massachusetts for me. But we'll see what the undercarriage looks like. Uh, it looks like here's the listing um, from 2022, or at least some photos uh, showing up on vehiclehistory.com out of Massachusetts. So that all lines up. And let's go ahead. It was being sold. Uh, I thought I saw something somewhere, but yeah, it's being sold at 160,000 miles in 2022. So I'm going to go ahead and Google it again because I thought I saw like a price in some of like the metadata. So let's assume maybe this is it. Maybe it's not. I'm going to assume $27,000 at that point. 
Um, but when you click on this link, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't bring it up. It's, you know, been taken down. So um, actually, there you go. So this is it. So it looks like it was most recently listed maybe around, yeah, 27,000. So, all right. So yeah, go, go internets. So that's kind of what they're maybe looking for. There are some videos, so be sure to check those out if you're interested in picking this up, but we're going to go ahead and jump into the photos. Let me maximize Fury viewing pleasure. And yeah, you can see the scuffs here on the front, right? You can see that uh, washer cover has been damaged and looks like that's what they you know, allegedly repaired. Uh, the wheels entire combination looks good as do the sliders lots of rock chips here on the front and on the front bumper you know those are commensurate for the year and the mileage i mean there's a lot there on the front at least that i can tell but um so maybe a little bit more than normal but looking down the side yeah this is such a pretty pretty truck uh appreciate the uh you know, the bronze wheels it looks looks good uh it looks like some sort of circular artifact here on the rear bumper so yeah lots of little kind of scuffs and, and damage Maybe it was used like in Boston proper or something, and yeah, it's just a bunch of, um, you know, a bunch of little dings and stuff from driving around the city. Uh, you can see on the hood, there's yeah some some damage going on. Looks like maybe something you know is dripping on it. In addition to all the rock chips, there are quite a few. There's a close up of the damage. Looks like it maybe got into that parking sensor as well. Just some scuffs on the other side. Yeah, they must have parked under yeah something that yeah dripped and yeah didn't like the paint, or it was left outside because uh, yeah similarly there's damage here on the uh, roof as well. Yeah, it's kind of a shame they put the roof rack over it so you can't really see how how bad it was. Surprisingly, the uh, one thing that's usually bad on these the rear spoiler it looks like the paint on that's just fine. Kind of there's more. I don't know if oh those are probably lights and not you know those are reflections. I'm like yeah it's kind of weird there's like rock chips on this uh, D pillar. But that all looks good. The SLE, um, yeah, sliders, they look, you know, brand new. So they didn't, obviously didn't go through all of those, um, yeah, those Massachusetts winters. And it's just more details of the scuffs. Yeah, it looks like it yeah, hit something pretty good here on the side. Not sure if that sensor's even functional. And then you can also see the fog lights there faded pretty good. So I'd assume this was parked outside uh, for most of its life. I am so interested to look at the undercarriage though, so let's get to it. You know, you would you're not really gonna get information from this this piece here, this little sill. This is all plastic, so yeah, you're not really gonna see any rust there. Um but yeah, those K uh, K M threes, those look good. I might have called them KO threes earlier, but yeah, those aren't out yet. <laughs> Moving to the interior, yeah, it looks pretty clean. Uh you can see yeah, just fading here on the seatbelt receptacle on the driver's seat. Um, kind of as you'd expect based on what we were seeing in those fog lights. Um, carpet looks good. Seats look pretty good. Headliner looks good. Um, yeah, not, not a whole lot to, to note there. Uh, headliner looks good. A pillar, or sorry, excuse me, B pillar. Yeah, that looks good. Uh, of course, the seatbelt. Why, why can't people get out of the seat without rolling the seatbelt? It's so annoying. <laughs> uh, the bottom of the seat does look like it's got some scratches. It could have been like refurbished or something. That's one thing that my uh, Lexus LS430 seats kind of look like. They kind of like lost all their texture because somebody had applied some, uh, basically some paste and then repainted it. So that's probably what's happened here. You can see there's quite a bit more texture here on the on the bolster on the on the back. So I'm gonna yeah assume that those have been kind of refinished. So yeah, it's probably not gonna fill the greatest. Yeah, otherwise, you know, not a whole lot to mention here. It looks like the photos were taken at different times in, in some of the other photos. You know, there's a whole bunch of junk here. Um, you know, take it for what it's worth. All right, so this door card, yeah, that all looks good. You can see the normal wear that, that happens on this grab handle. Uh, no signs of paintless dent repair, at least here. Uh, you can see the VIN sticker there. Yeah, but that looks just fine. I'm trying to remember, so you can see this little cap uh, here. Let me zoom in so you can see it. There's this little cap. I might be tempted to call that paintless dent repair. I think the way they've, the way the cap is, yeah, I, I don't think that's a Toyota cap. So I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb that they popped out a dent there at least. We'll see if there's any other signs elsewhere on the vehicle. Uh, passenger side, yeah, it looks good. Looks like those WeatherTech mats are pretty new. Uh, similar sun fade on the um, seatbelt receptacle on the passenger seat. 
Yeah, I just really, I, I hate to see these things changing hands so quickly. I wish I understood, you know, what some of the motivations are. You know, maybe somebody bought it and they're you know, just not interested in, you know, kind of keeping it. But uh, you can also see a little bit of Sunfade 2 on the shifter handle. It's very common. It's kind of like it loses the wood grain and just turns into this like flat brown color and kind of matches the, the carpet. Yeah, maybe back to that other plug. If I remember right, I've kind of been confused before. The 200 series, they sometimes, I think they might have, um, you know, a hole here from the factory. So, so that might be an uh, original Toyota thing. Uh, there's your VIN sticker there on the passenger door. Moving back to the interior. Yeah, nothing really to write home. It's got something for mounting a phone um, stuck above the vent there on the driver's side. Um, some minor scratches on the center console. Not much to write home about, just looks pretty normal. Uh, missing the cigarette lighter in there. Some, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know why you need two different things for two different phones. Maybe it was <laughs> used for Uber or Lyft. I don't know. I'd love to get a ride on Uber or Lyft. You know, it's kind of interesting. So I see this uh, little lower kick panel separated here. The I, I just looked at a 2008 in uh, it was like a Sonoran Gold one in um, at Marin Toyota. And it similarly had this popped out. Uh, yeah, kind of, kind of curious why that's not sitting totally flush. Kind of interesting to see it happen on yeah, two different vehicles. Um, on this, the shifter or not the shifter, the steering wheel. Normally, these buttons are wore off, so it's good to see those are in fine shape. And then, yeah, 163,000 miles, which again, that's great. Um, oil pressure looks good. Um, sorry, oil pressure down here. Water temperature. This is with the engine, you know, running. Good, good idle. Yeah, nothing concerning there uh definitely on this based on the age i mean it was in massachusetts so they probably used four wheel drive or you know low range occasionally so yeah make sure it shifts quickly into yeah four low and the center diff lock you know turns on quickly whether you hit the button or when you shift it down but yeah you can see on the shifter handle how that kind of fades out it's kind of weird how it does that i don't know if it's like it's delaminating or what but yeah it kind of looks like garbage and then they've been using some sort of um you know, like phone mount that yeah clips onto these little louvers. So wouldn't be surprised if they're broken. Uh, you can kind of see how the angle on them doesn't all look uniform. Maybe, maybe not, but just something to be aware of based on those scratches so we can see. And then, yeah, tons of scratches here. It looks like they've they had like a little dog, uh, and that's kind of what that looks like to me, some dog that sits there on the center console and just scratches it all up. Yeah, those those cool boxes, they just, they just don't do it for me. Uh, yeah, if I were to get a new GX uh, 550, yeah, I'd definitely get one without a without a cool box. Just one more thing to go wrong. Uh, Vince sticker there on the rear quarter panel on the passenger side. Uh, second row looks good. Yeah, nothing really to yeah, mention, talk about here. Uh, not seeing any paintless dent repair, at least on this uh, rear quarter panel on the passenger side. Uh, this passenger door looks good. You can see a Vince sticker down there. Yeah, nothing really catching my attention there. Looks good. Moving to the um, driver's side, Vince sticker on the rear quarter panel. Yeah, that door jam all looks good. And yeah, let's see, a little bit of kind of like weird texture here on the door card. And the seatbelt is really twisted up. Not sure how they do that. Uh, little wrapper. <laughs> get that get that cleaned up for the photos. Come on. Um, yeah, nothing really to yeah, write home. Looks looks pretty clean. I haven't. I don't. I don't know if I've seen paintless dent repair evidence yet. Um, little looks like a little tear in the seat leather here in the second row. Yeah, this uh, door card on the passenger side yeah, looks good too. Sometimes the paintless dent repair guys they're good and they you know hide them underneath the, you know the holes that they make underneath the weather strip. But maybe they did it right and they yeah, pulled the door panels off i don't know uh, it looks like this one's missing the little cover inside the door handle if we go back uh to the uh, let's see the passenger side if we can go back yeah see how there's not those little lines in there so that looks like there's like an inset cup and then when you come over to this uh, driver's side it looks like that cup is missing so that's an indicator that they did get in behind the door panel maybe and you know popped out the dents you know the quote the right way uh there's an sticker there at the bottom of the door so i don't know maybe it's maybe it's all good yeah seeing those dog hair or the those scratches yeah you might want to you know if you're sensitive to dog hair and stuff like that yeah, you might find evidence of that elsewhere but third row looks good rear cargo area yeah that looks nice as well headliner looks good all the way back 
yeah, clean underneath, you usually see like a big fat stain in between these <laughs> second row seats and that 60-40 split. Not seeing it here, so that's a good sign. Yeah, I mean, it seems, seems pretty clean for the most part. Uh, not a lot of issues that yeah, I'm seeing, at least cosmetically. Uh, there's your VIN sticker for the lower tailgate, and I'm sure we'll see one for the upper tailgate at some point. Yeah, it looks like you got a full weather tech mat there. Uh, there's your VIN sticker for the upper. All right, so talking about the idea of corrosion, this has been in uh, Massachusetts, you know, pretty much its whole life. Look at the bolts here on these uh, little, uh, you know, closing sensors. Uh, that's a little, makes me a little nervous. Um, kind of, they're, they're bad on both sides. These are the ones that are outside of the weather strip, right? So those are gonna, you know, catch all of the, all the junk. Uh, moving to the engine bay, you can see just how dynamic this Amazon Greek color is, but <laughs> uh, so we've got rust on like all of these fasteners. What is probably most concerning, especially from the engine in the, you know, kind of like the body perspective, you, you can deal with stuff on, you know, little brackets and screws and this and that. But when you see the rust bubbling in the seams here, yeah, that's when I just, I don't know. I, it can still have lots of life. I know, you know, people are good at dealing with that. But yeah, for me, my personal preferences, yeah, I'd, I'd walk away from this. There's just too much rust already based on what I've seen. You also will see it if we got detail photos here of the of the hood, you know, you'd see it bubbling around each of these holes. Yeah, it's just the nature of yeah, having a vehicle there in the uh, in the Northeast. Okay, moving to the undercarriage, you know, they it looks like they did a pretty good job of cleaning it up. Um, so it looks great, you know, it looks fantastic, but a couple things you want to just kind of keep your eye on is, you know, so this is a skid plate for the fuel tank. Uh, there are holes in it, right? Those holes are manufactured. Uh, however, there are some additional holes that are either larger or they're created as a result of the corrosion process. So, you know, to think this is a great, you know, these skid plates, I'm glad, at least on the Land Cruiser, they are you know, metal, they're steel. So, you know, you can use them as like a telltale. I passed up a great looking left-hand drive, no sunroof, Imperial Jade Mica uh, 100 series with the uh, 1HDE FTE because I could see that there were holes in the skid plate. And I'm just like, I don't, I don't need that drama in my life. Uh, there's some interesting texture here on the inside of the frame rail. Mm, not sure what I'd make of it. The passenger side, is that right? Passenger side? Yeah. Or driver side. Um, looks fine. So yeah, it's kind of, kind of curious why we've got that texture there. Um, I don't know. It looks good. I'd really be concerned as to what's underneath some of this stuff. Uh, looks like these are the, um, yeah, the photos from the soda blasting. So it looks like they did a good job, kind of like a little kind of sandblasting thing, but you can see, you know, some of these holes and yeah, some of the issues that you know we're coming from that also seeing this flaking here on this upper cross member yeah it makes you a little nervous uh let's see yeah nothing really to note there you can s yeah i wonder if this is like mid process or not um because you can see there's some you know some kind of like black paint but it's still um you know kind of whitish in color here but i don't know it, it it looks like it cleaned up pretty good but like stuff like this this rust here yeah you can't you're just not going to be able to get rid of that it's just always going to be there there's no way that this is like the soda blasting is an abrasive blasting right does anybody know what i I'll have to google it afterward but i, th I thought soda blasting might have been like a carbon dioxide thing but based on the finish here uh yeah i kind of get the sense that it's yeah they used i don't know some sort of media to blast it um you know based on that finish but maybe not yeah, interesting. I'm gonna have to Google what that is. <laughs> but yeah, there's there's enough corrosion. I mean, look at this cross member up beyond, you know, out of kind of out of frame. Yeah, that just doesn't look great. Also the little bracket around the KDSS, you know, here for the rear. I don't know. It's just way too crunchy for me. Yeah, they spent quite a bit of money um on this recently with with this work looks like they yeah, painted stuff got the new wheels and tires radiator um yeah just a whole bunch of little little things here and there F vehicle tint yeah six thousand bucks another 1200 for the skid plate another what 1700 for the for the sliders 
So yeah, assuming that they picked it up for you know twenty six, twenty seven, they added another you know ten grand plus. So are they really going to get thirty seven out of it? Yeah, I don't know. I would have spent my money on you know a better starting point if you wanted to you know kind of go for a flip and you know update it. But maybe they're you know they just like outfitting them. But uh, let's see. So as far as setting a price, um, you know the mileage is pretty good. Uh, given its history in the Northeast, I think it's a great vehicle for somebody that's, you know, either in the Midwest or in the Rust Belt already. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think it's going to attract, uh, you know, buyers from, yeah, Sun Belt or, you know, Western States just because there's, you know, why, why would you? Um, but cool color nonetheless. Uh, I don't know, somebody's probably going to pay upwards of, I don't know, like 30, 32 grand for it. Let's say 32. Um, yeah, 32,000. We'll, we'll say that's it. Good looking truck. I wish it yeah, hadn't lived its life in, in Massachusetts, but yeah, that's kind of how it, <laughs> how it goes. People need, need, need vehicles, uh, you know, in the Northeast as well. Yeah. I get comments occasionally that I make too big of a deal about rust. Like if you're going to be working on these vehicles, which I know some people aren't, but, or if you don't hate your mechanic yet, I wouldn't, I don't know. I just wouldn't fuss. Let let people that yeah <laughs> hate their lives and like dealing with rust and stuff, you know, let them do that. And if you're getting like a super smoking deal, it might make sense. But yeah, ultimately you just spend you know as much time or twice as much time dealing with the rust as you do is like replacing something. So yeah, it's just not worth it to me. Not worth my uh, my time and effort. You uh, yeah by spending a little bit more and getting a clean rust free example, yeah, you're gonna save time in the long run. So anyway, 32,000, that's what I think it'll, it'll go for. I uh, hope it goes for less. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Who knows? Thanks. Thanks for taking your time. Thanks for watching. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one.